Welcome to the Backyard Professor Responds videos. Breaking news. This is not a joke. 3i Atlas has just sent us a radio signal from yesterday. I just got the news. Uh, and so I rushed, of course, to share this with you. Uh, this is not a joke. It is sending a radio signal. Now, the question is, what does this mean? And I have jotted some notes down. I have put some information together, and I'm going to read this to you. I got this information from Wired. It's a news feed. And uh, let me share this. Just a few years ago, astronomers spotted something amazing. A few months ago, I should say. Well, a few years ago. They spotted something amazing drifting into our solar system, an object called 3i Atlas. 3i is third interstellar object. We know all that. In plain English, this thing came from outside our solar system. It wasn't born near the sun or Jupiter or any of our planets. It's a cosmic visitor traveling for many millions of years before swinging by our sun. We know all that. Now, this past week, a report in Wired said that 3i Atlas, this was just yesterday, had sent out radio signals. The internet exploded. Did aliens send us a message? That is what we all want to know. Astronomers using South Africa's Meerkat radio telescope array aimed their dishes at 3i Atlas October 24, 2025. As it turned closest to the sun, what scientists call perihelion, they picked up radio waves around 1665 and 1667 megahertz. That's part of the microwave spectrum, far above what your phone or Wi-Fi use, by the way. Those exact frequencies are known to belong to a molecule called hydroxyl, and it's written capital O, capital H. Hydroxyl forms when sunlight breaks apart water molecules in the outer layers or coma of a comet. When OH interacts with sunlight, it can absorb or emit energy at those very specific frequencies. So when the scientists saw the absorption lines at both 1665 and 1667 megahertz, they didn't see an alien greeting. They saw chemistry happening. Why this matters for decades. Astronomers have used these OH lines to study comets inside our solar system. They are like fingerprints. So they're very valuable to us. If you see them, you know water ice is being turned into gas by the sun's heat. That means 3i Atlas is not just a lump of rock. It's a volatile rich body, probably full of ices like water, carbon dioxide, and methane. That's the behavior of a comet, not a spacecraft. So you can put your excitement down if you're thinking this is proof that this is a mothership. It is nothing of the sort. Here's the fun twist. Before this, scientists were arguing whether 3i Atlas was a comet or something else entirely. The radio signal ended the debate. It is definitely natural. It's not mechanical. And that's the final word on this subject. As far as, is this thing artificial? It has lots of anomalies. We're not arguing that. This is the final nail in the coffin coffin against it being a UFO mothership guided by extraterrestrial intelligent aliens that might come and abduct some of us earthlings or whatever it is aliens are said to do, not on this 3i Atlas comet, they won't. What about the Fibonacci signal story though, smart Alec BYP? Well, here's what about it, smart Alec questioners. You might have seen online claim that 3i Atlas is pulses at 1420 megahertz, the hydrogen line following a Fibonacci pattern like 813, 85, 13, 8, et cetera. Definitely a Fibonacci pattern. There's no question about that. Well, that would be spooky because Fibonacci numbers show up in a nature 
and mathematics situation. And 1420 megahertz is the frequency that SETI researchers often monitor for alien messages. So that's interesting. However, and this is crucial, no real observatory confirmed those pulses. No peer-reviewed study reported them, no telescope logs matched them, and the story appears to have started on social media. So the Fibonacci signal is internet myth-making and babble. It is not science. What makes radio astronomy so powerful is because it's detecting invisible light, the radio waves, which are much longer than our visible physical light. They come from energetic or chemical processes, electrons spiraling in magnetic fields, atoms changing energy levels, or molecules absorbing and emitting radiation. That's how that works. In this case, the hydroxyl molecule gives off radio waves at exact quantized frequencies, kind of like musical notes played on a cosmic instrument. Each molecule has its own song, and by listening with sensitive antennas, we can tell what kind of atoms and ices are present even in distant space. And that is cooler than I'll get out. That's how we can identify water, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, methane, or ammonia without ever touching the comet itself. What makes 3i Atlas special is all the anomalies. Unlike 2i Borisov, it looked like an ordinary comet. 3i Atlas has shown some weird chemistry. Data from the James Webb Space Telescope found it was had very high CO2 to H2O ratio, eight times higher than normal comets. But that doesn't prove aliens. It also doesn't prove artificial. That might mean it formed in a colder, more carbon-rich region of another system of stars. So while the radio signal isn't alien, it still is very fascinating. We're learning what kinds of materials exist in other planetary systems. That's exciting. And by comparison, what makes ours unique? So why it's definitely not aliens waving at us and saying hello is because the signal is continuous. It's not a burst or a pattern. Messages usually repeat or encode information. The frequencies exactly match natural hydroxyl lines. The same one seen in hundreds of known comets. The shape of the signal changes with the comet's position relative to the sun, which matches normal outgassing physics. The data were recorded simultaneously by multiple dishes, showing it wasn't a local interference or an artificial pulse. So, finally... The message frequency, 1420 megahertz, hasn't even, wasn't even the one detected. That's just rumor. So no, 3i Atlas did not phone home. It breathed out molecules, and we happened to hear them. The real beauty here, though, even though it's not aliens, this discovery is cosmic poetry. Think about it. A piece of ice and dust born from around another star travels for millions of years through the dark. And when sunlight finally warms it near our sun, it sings in radio waves that our telescopes can hear. That, that's incredible. That's nature speaking. Not in words, no, but in the universal language of physics. So rather than disappointment, this should fill us with awe. We've caught a faint whisper from an interstellar traveler, man. Not a greeting from intelligent beings, that's true, but a scientific conversation with the universe itself. So what's the big lesson? When we hear the word signal, we imagine communication. But in science, a signal means any detectable data. And that's what we have to keep in mind here. Astronomers are cautious, probably sometimes overly cautious. This is good. They check every possibility they compare with known physics and only then decide if something's truly new. That's how science guards truth against wishful thinking. If you don't like that, tough luck, get over it. That's how this works. The universe is full of mysteries still. 
but also of natural beauty far richer than any fiction we can dream up. And sometimes what we call just chemistry is still deeply magical because it shows that the same atoms in our own oceans of air are also out there between the stars. So the verdict 3i atlas isn't sending messages. It's sending a radio frequency. And that's teaching us plenty. It's showing that interstellar space isn't empty. It's filled with travelers carrying water, carbon, and life-building blocks. And when they pass through our skies, we get a glimpse, not of alien minds, but of the shared cosmic story we all belong to. That's the juice. So that's basically my report on 3i Atlas giving us radio signals. Yes, it is true. No, it is not aliens. So as I discover more information about 3i Atlas, I will be more than happy to share it with you. In the meantime, we keep working toward improving ourselves. That is where the improvement works magic. Not others and not out in space ourselves here on our planet. That's our focus. So thanks for watching the Backyard Professor Respond videos. I'll be back just as soon as I find more information. Have a great night.